Hello there, fellow Rhino enjoyers. Is this tank worth grinding? Is it even good or is it fun? Does it bring something new to the game? That's what we're going to find out in today's video. And if you want to see a tech tree review of the entire new Italian heavy tank tech tree, put it down in the comments and I'll make one at some point. Let's first have a look at the vehicle itself. DPM, not really that high, but expected for a heavy tank of this type. 420 alpha damage, two shots in the clip, 3.3 seconds interclip reload, two second aim time, 0.31 dispersion, fine there. Seven degrees of gun depression, not great, but okay. Mobility is not noteworthy essentially, but the armor of this vehicle in a hull down position like this against the medium tank is going to be very strong. You're not really going to be able to penetrate it with, for example, an object 140 that I'm demonstrating it here. However, if you're on flat ground with a vehicle and you're fighting against the heavy tank that, for example, has high heat penetration, like the 57 Heavy, you can damage the ammo rack or you can even blow it up with two shots because the ammo rack is right behind the front turret plate, which is not really a great design if you that's the main weak spot on the top of the vehicle. But did, anyway, I didn't try to provoke that. It just happened. Like, I shot it at it three times and it exploded, so... Be careful, you don't want it to turn into the new 60 TP in terms of... It's a tank that's pretty good, but it kind of likes to explode. Now, two-shot auto reloader. Already complicates it a little bit compared to single-shot guns. But, that also makes it more interesting. More interesting than, for example, a VZ-55 or the good old vehicle that everybody forgets, the WZ-1321. That Does anybody have that tank? Please tell me in the comments, because I don't think anybody, anybody actually has that vehicle. The Rhino, however, can be worth grinding because it does bring something interesting to the game. Now, not the front armor, though, because that's a sort of rounded pike nose, and a rounded pike nose is essentially weak at any angle, which is not really that great, so you can penetrate the hull with a lot of guns quite easily, especially on flat ground. If it's not hull down, you can go straight to the lower plate, no problems asked ever. However, your 840 clip damage that you can unload in 3.3 seconds is going to be very useful in a lot of situations, especially in those where you can reload that clip in peace. But make sure to not actually fire the gun while you're reloading the second shell because then you lose all the progress on your reload, which wouldn't be very nice and the DPM's already not that fantastic, so you will kind of hurt yourself a lot with that. Now, ideally, this is not the type of vehicle that you go in and face brawl everybody because, as you will see later, face hugging vehicles like an E100 makes the tank a lot weaker. But to be honest, I pretty much always play around the enemy team rather than in front of them because if I'm on their side or behind them, they can't shoot me while I can shoot them. So that is obviously very beneficial rather because if I sit right in front of them, yeah, I'm going to get shot. So I want to shoot an enemy that I can shoot at easily, but that can't shoot me because they're not actually looking at me. Right? That is the easiest way to get damage. Now, 2k damage over here, 206A is eliminated. 206A on our team, and the R7, they're now going down. So what I'm going to do here is exactly, I'm going to peek the C100, he's not looking at me. Now the E100 is looking at me, so I'm going to peek the E50M instead, who isn't looking at me. And now, I kind of knew that the E100 is probably going to push me, and he is indeed. And now, I kind of really don't want to face hug the E100 here, because the turret plate is angled upwards, which means if the enemy tank is above me, the average armor decreases the higher the tank is above me, because the less the angle is. Which means I don't want to face hug vehicles that are taller than me. You can face hug vehicles that are shorter, but that's not a lot, because this is not a very tall vehicle in general. So, I don't really want to engage with the E100 there and play around the gun and reload the gun, right? Because the easiest way to reload your gun while the enemy is fighting you is to just get out of the enemy's line of fire so that you can reload while the enemy can't shoot you. Obviously, that E100, he goes forward. He can't shoot me. Now the E100, E50M comes around the side. Yeah, pay attention to what's going on around you. That's the number one rule of Blitz. Just simply pay attention to what's going on around you. And don't play too aggressively. Don't play too passively. Because this vehicle works essentially best in a playstyle that isn't all the way at the front line. You don't brawl people head on. You do poke them. Get your two shots in from the side. 
And then you retreat a little bit to reload. You can also play hell down, but that is limited by the seven degrees of gun depression. Not really that great, but you can work with it. Seven, seven degrees is kind of like that. It works. It's not great. It's average. Could be better, but you can deal with it. Now, bad medium tanks is uh, something that you ideally don't want to deal with, uh, especially those that go to the heavy tank side and then brawl with heavy tanks. I think that's the saddest thing to see in the entirety of World of Tanks Blitz, where it kind of makes sense for, for an IS-7, an IS-4, a Mouse, an E-100 to go ahead and brawl with other heavy tanks, because that's kind of what they're supposed to do. But when you see a lonely bat shaft run into three enemy heavies and try to face hug them, yeah, that kind of hurts. Now what I'm doing here again, very simple technique. Super Conqueror can shoot me, but that's Chinchurin. He's not looking at me. I peek him, I put two shots into him. I took 800 damage, I dealt 800 damage. So, uh, I took 400, I dealt 800. And if you can do two hit points of damage for every hit point you lose, that's 4,800 damage in this tank right here, which is not too bad. Now, what you want to do is play this vehicle Thoughtfully, don't rush in there, like, like like what's happening over there. Because right now, Super Conqueror is looking at my teammates. I shoot him in the side. Very simple. That is how you want to play a vehicle like this, right? Thoughtful, find yourself those opportunities to do damage without getting damage back. Because the more hit points you retain till the end of the battle, the more likely it is that you're going to be able to win it. However, you still have to do damage continuously throughout the battle while trying to retain your hit points. And with this vehicle, it works pretty well because the third armor, like in this case, where I can drive back, I have the angle. He's not gonna be able to pen me. He also doesn't have high penetration heat rounds that he could use calibrated on to make even better. He does have APCR, so that's gonna be a little bit of a struggle. Just like me driving is also always a struggle. I'll be fine. And uh, here is exactly what I just mentioned about one minute ago. It's, it's almost if, as if I knew. Hmm. <clears throat> anyway. So, yeah. You don't like seeing that when, when your mediums rush into the heavies. You don't like seeing that. You always want to get some distance, some separation, especially in a situation like this, right? Get away from the fight. Because if you get distance, you gain time. If you gain time, you can reload. You can reposition. You can shoot at the enemy while they move towards you. It is all going to be beneficial. Obviously, if you're too far away, you can't shoot at anybody. But in this case, this match is completely lost. And it has been for quite a while. And I even made the mistake of not pulling out fast enough. So I lost quite a couple of hit points there unnecessarily. That I could have now had to get in, for example, three shots instead of two. And I, again, I want to get out of there, out of that situation as quickly as possible. To maybe, again, reload that shell. Now, I could have avoided shooting... I did 260 there, but I know that the Sharon's gonna come around the other side and it's gonna finish it off. So it doesn't really matter what I do, who I shoot at. But that is 4,000 damage in the Rhinoceront nonetheless. And it is a very nice and interesting vehicle if you have an acceptable team. Obviously, if you play on the day of the update, you're never going to have that. But after that, you're gonna have very usable teams in many cases. Because I didn't say good, I said usable teams. Let's say good teams. Good teams and usable te A usable team is one that doesn't collapse within a minute. That's a usable team. But, yeah. A lot of them still collapse within a minute, which is not cool. And, hey, camping bat chat. We love that. Now, again here... I'm essentially following the same formula on every tank, every battle. Shoot at the tanks that don't shoot at me. And then do damage. And then win. Boom. Now. Medium side... Obviously, I'm gonna go to the medium side with this vehicle. This is not even a discussion that I'm gonna go to this side of the map with this vehicle. Got enough mobility to keep up. It does have 7 degrees of gun depression. It's not great, so you can play the hills relatively okay. And you have the two shots. That's 800 damage. Which means if you are gonna fight a medium, you're gonna be sort of fine. And here we have complete map control in this battle. Which is an absolutely lovely sight to have. And now again, I'm gonna unfortunately biff the shell because I thought to myself, okay, if he turns further, I can't do damage anymore. So I'm just gonna throw that shell away. I'm gonna do the damage and I'm gonna get out, reload in peace. Now, the two STBs, they're gonna get ruined by the enemy team here. Not really nice. 
I'm gonna try to help them out here. It wasn't really the greatest idea to put a STB into the city like that, but they distracted the enemy team long enough so that the rest of the heavies will now be able to sort of attack that VK that's still sitting there and doing nothing. So, again, see, I'm kind of playing the vehicle the same every time. I'm not going straight at the enemy into their faces. I'm playing around them, shooting them in the side, and that is where my impact is coming from. And that is, in my opinion, what the vehicle does best at, right? Because you have that auto reloader. You can pump 840 damage into a shot and then disappear for a couple of seconds and then pop up in another place and do the same thing again. If you do that three times, you're already above average with that. So now, Rinoceronte, Grill, and VK. The VK is going to get dealt with from the rest of the team. So all I'm going to have to do now is go at the Rinoceronte. I'm not going to reload the second shot here. But again, 3,800 damage once again. Right here. This thing, I can recommend it. It is new. It is interesting. It's not boring like a uh, VZ-55 or a WZ-1321. It does bring something new to the game. It is a solid vehicle. I think the place all of it is relatively straightforward. Just don't phase hug an E100. Don't get ammo racked. And then you will be perfectly fine with the tank. So, I can recommend it to intermediate and advanced players that don't have anything else to grind, basically. With that said, thank you very much for watching. See you next one. Goodbye.